Hey guys, I am back with an updated tutorial for how I take my magical Christmas tree pictures. To prep this space, I cleaned up toys, I finished, you know, unwrapping the holiday decor. I decided to move our blanket ladder closer to the tree so that I could catch that in the background of pictures. And then I brought down a few presents that my mother-in-law had already wrapped. It just adds to that Christmas morning feeling, but it also hid my husband's speaker. And then I pushed some furniture out of the way so I'd have a clean area to shoot. So the next thing you need to do is you turn off every light in the area. If you've ever bought light bulbs, then you know that lights have different temperatures. And to make editing easier and to add to the magic, you want one temperature of light coming from the tree. So this is from a different house a few years ago, and I'm showing you here all the lights off. But then we turned on some lights in the background, and you can see how it just takes away from that magic but it's also gonna make your editing a nightmare. Because of these lighting conditions, you're gonna to have to shoot these in manual if you don't already do so, but don't get scared. So you're gonna take your ISOs and put them way up. So this year I was at 5,000, but I've gone even higher than that in the past. For shutter speed, I know without a tripod, I can't go any lower than one over 250. So that's a great place to start. For aperture, it's gonna depend on your lens. I'm at a 1.8 this year. Uh, I think last year I shot between 1.4 and 2.2. And when I feel good about my setup and my settings, I bring in the boys. They were so excited to do that. <laughs> so these are some clips from this year and a few years ago. I try to get the boys as close to the tree as possible with their faces pointing towards the tree. You can see how dark their faces get when they look away from the tree. So then I'm giving them prompts like point to your favorite ornament, oh, get really close and take a good look at it. And all these things are just to get some genuine reactions and getting them close to the tree. I try to position myself so that I'm shooting across the tree. So the boys and I are across from each other and then the tree is kind of between us. So that helps me catch the tree in the corner. And it also gets that, that creamy bokeh from the tree that I think makes these so magical. So I'm always slightly posing, like put your arm around your brother and show them your favorite ornament. And I'm constantly talking to them. This year as they're getting older, it's getting a little more challenging. So a lot of what we did this year was just making tooting noises to make them laugh. But I try to make this quick, like 15 to 20 minutes and then we're done because I want them to enjoy it and for me to not get frustrated because this is supposed to be fun. One year we had a real fireplace. This year we have a TV next to our tree. So I brought up a fake fireplace and I, you know, I didn't really like it. I thought that it made it too bright, but it's an option. So here's a quick scroll through what I got this year. You can see that they're pretty bright and pretty good in camera. You don't want these being dark in camera thinking you can fix it in post. If you shot in RAW, then this next step will be for you. If you shot in JPEG, skip to the next part. You're gonna see me working in ACR because I use Photoshop, but Lightroom has the same features. To handle white balance, I use the eyedropper tool. I picked a white point and then I just tweaked it to get it how I liked it. From there, I jumped around a little bit. So welcome to how my brain edits. I increased the exposure a little bit. I think I actually went back and increased it more when I was done with this, but I also brought up the white points and the highlights to make it a little brighter. I increased the texture and the vibrance. I ended up increasing my shadows just a hair and then I increased the saturation as well. Then I went to the color grading tab, selected midtones and added like a red orange color, just a little bit of it to give a little bit of warmth to the midtones. And then I like to flip between the before and after just to make sure I don't always trust my eye. But when I was happy with that, I copied those settings to the next picture in the queue. You'll see that I go up and I click that white arrow up above the histogram. That shows you where your highlights are blown out. I'm totally fine with them being blown out on the lights. I just wanted to make sure that his face was good. But all I'm doing from here is I'm just tweaking a little bit. So I'm, you know, editing a picture, getting happy with it, copying those settings to the next one in that group. And that helps me make sure that my editing is consistent and also makes it a lot faster. Because you're shooting with such high ISOs, you are gonna have some noise. So the last thing that I did was I selected all the pictures in this batch. I went to the noise tab. I put the sharpening at 10, the noise reduction at 25, and the color noise reduction on five. 
that's just what I did. You can do whatever here. Um, you can just play around with it till you get it how you liked it. And then I opened everything into Photoshop for those last final little touches. From here, if you shot in JPEG, this is where you would pick up. If you don't have access to Lightroom or Photoshop, I'm pretty sure that you can demo those for free, but the process for the next part is the same for every picture. I crop it and straighten it if necessary, and I make sure that Content Aware is on. You'll see the computer um, fill in the edge for me, and that makes it so helpful. It's pretty good at filling in the edges that you cropped. Then with the patch tool, I'm going in and working on some of the shadows on his forehead. That's just me being picky, totally not necessary. He did have some crumbs on his face from dinner, so here I am cleaning those up. And then I flatten my image, and then I wanted to add a mid-tone pop. I have an action for that, but all you have to do is a curve and just take that middle point and pull it up a little bit. Here I am using a quick mask to select his face, so I'm just brushing that quick quick mask on his face. I'm going to levels and I'm pulling the triangles to the edge of the histogram and that just adds a little pop to his face. So then I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to work on that left side of the picture. You know, you can see the neighbor's light. That's why you want to have all the lights in your house off, but there's obviously nothing I can do about the neighbor. So I am using the burn tool. You can also do this in levels, but I'm just burning the edge of that picture. For me, this is like when the picture really starts to pop and really feel magical. I like to do it on its own layer because sometimes you know you don't get it right or you're too heavy handed or whatever. So it lets you go back and tailor it or mask it and brush it off your subject if you need to. Then here, what I'm doing is a few years ago, I bought these Christmas tree bokeh lights on Etsy. They were very affordable. And I think that they just kind of give your picture that little something extra. So I added that layer here. I brought down the opacity a little bit because I want it to feel kind of natural where you could believe that my Christmas tree really is that bright. So I'm painting, you know, I'm masking some of it off. I'm taking it off the ornaments. I'm just following the natural, like the light that was originally on my picture. I'm following that and I'm just amplifying it. Then I just repeat that process over and over and over for all the pictures that I want to edit. So it's, you know, cropping and straightening, cleaning up the face a little bit. These edits that I'm doing right here are just because I'm being super picky. They, you wouldn't even notice if I didn't do it probably. So I'm, you know, getting all his little imperfections off, mid-tone pop, brightening his face. And then I was going to kind of burn the edge, decided I didn't like it, so I took it off, saved it, and just went on and repeated that until I was done. Here are some of the final pictures of what I was editing during this video. I love these pictures. To me, this is just like the epitome of the magic of Christmas with kids. And you know, even if you don't have kids, maybe you could do this with your pet or even just your tree alone. I think this is just such a magical way to take pictures during this time of the year. I hope that this was helpful and that you can get creative this year too.